The Maniac is a general purpose all electronic digital computer planned and built by the Electronic Computer Group of the Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory, which is operated for the Atomic Energy Commission by the University of California. Physically, the machine is about nine feet wide, seven feet high, and two feet deep. Its 3,000 electron tubes and associated components are arranged in open construction for adequate ventilation and ease of maintenance. Operating power is supplied by a bank of storage batteries kept charged by a pair of motor generator sets. 19 discrete voltage levels obtained from taps on the battery bank are monitored on the power control panel. By design, the Maniac is capable of handling many different types of problems, which it solves in terms of the four fundamental arithmetic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, using the binary system of numbers. An addition or subtraction is performed in about 60 microseconds, a multiplication or division in less than a millisecond. Answers appear normally as numbers of 40 binary digits, corresponding to approximately 12 decimal places. Problems are submitted to the maniac on narrow strips of perforated paper tape, which enter the machine through a photoelectric reader at its input end. At the output end, answers are printed on paper in a high-speed writer. Between these extremities lie the three basic elements of the computer an arithmetic unit forming the large central portion of the machine where all the computation takes place, an electrostatic memory consisting of 40 cathode ray tubes mounted in metal cases above the arithmetic unit, and a control system which reaches throughout the machine and coordinates the activities of the various parts of it. The fundamental operation of the maniac is illustrated by a block diagram of its basic components. A problem is fed into the input section a little at a time. As soon as the input is loaded to capacity, the control is notified and responds by sending back to the input an order to deposit its contents in the memory, making room for more of the problem in the input. This goes on rapidly until all of the problem is in the memory. The solution of the problem then begins. A button is pushed, and the control tells the memory to send some material down into the arithmetic unit so it can be worked on. When an operation is completed, the arithmetic unit notifies the control. Intermediate and final answers are stored in the memory. Finally, the control instructs the memory to deliver the answer to the output and orders the output to phrase the answer in usable form. Problem material is submitted to the maniac in coded decimal or pseudo-binary form. The binary equivalent of a decimal number is written as an arrangement of ones and zeros but it may be indicated in other ways, such as by lights and no lights, or holes and no holes, where a light or a hole is a one and its absence a zero. Groups of four ones and zeros, called tetrads, are used in the maniac to replace the decimal numbers zero through nine. The arrangement of the elements in the tetrad determines its value. Six letters, representing numbers from 10 through 15, are used also. Because the machine operates only on numbers in true binary form, the coded decimal tetrads must be converted before any computation takes place. This conversion is a simple operation which is included as a part of every problem. When the problem is solved, answers are converted from true binary to coded decimal form. These conversions are not apparent to a casual user of the machine. 
The maniac can be useful only when it is told precisely what to do in a language it understands. A problem submitted to it for a solution must contain two kinds of information. The actual numerical quantities involved and directions indicating exactly how they are to be handled. This material is logically interwoven in a preliminary coding process where it becomes a collection of symbols depicting the operations in the computer required to accomplish the solution of the problem. The coder works from a flow diagram which has been drawn up by the author of the problem. This diagram is essentially a picture of the path to be followed by the computer and the solution of the problem. The diagram consists of directional flow lines broken at appropriate points for the insertion of boxes indicating the computation to be performed locally. Represented here are various necessary logical steps and decisions as well as purely mathematical operations. Also memory information where necessary. A problem in its final coded form is a sequence of instructions. Each instruction is made up of an order and an address. An order is a command to the machine to perform a specific operation. In code, it is a combination of two letters in the range A through F. There are about 30 such combinations in use. A memory is a place where essential information is stored to be available immediately when needed. An elementary memory is a piece of paper upon which notes are jotted down for future reference. The maniac's memory may be shown as a square array of dots or spots, 32 by 32. Each spot represents a possible storage location of an item of information. The address part of an instruction refers to one of these 1024 locations. In code, it is a combination of three numbers or letters and numbers, for instance, 2E7. Thus, an instruction tells the machine what operation to perform and where to find the material upon which to perform it. Instructions are handled in pairs. A pair of instructions is called a word and consists of an order, an address, another order, and another address. A ten-digit number is also a word. A group of words is a problem. To be intelligible to the computer, the words must be converted from coded symbols to a series of holes and blanks arranged in pseudo-binary form on a strip of paper tape. A modified teletype machine is used to make this conversion. The machine has a 16-character keyboard. The characters are the 10 ordinal numbers, 0 through 9, and the 6 letters, A through F. For every symbol in a word, there is a corresponding key on the machine. As a key is depressed, the binary equivalent of the character is punched transversely on the tape as a tetrad, a set of four holes and blanks. The space symbol, five holes, is used to separate words. The accuracy of a tape punching is checked on a verifying machine. This consists of a tape reader and a modified teletype unit so arranged that as the problem is typed out again in accordance with the original coding, a light flashes when an error occurs. Until the error is corrected, the keyboard remains locked. Tapes are duplicated automatically. The original is run through a reader which feels for the holes and converts them to electrical impulses which are transmitted to a punching machine where the duplicate is turned out. The duplicating machinery is used extensively in the preparation of subsequent problems of any particular type. In this application, the duplication is stopped where changes are to be made and continues when new material has been inserted. Problems of commonly used types are accumulated in a tape library. The use of the basic portions of these problems in the taping of similar problems 
results in a considerable saving of time. A taped problem enters the computer through a photoelectric reader which feeds in words at the rate of about 20 per second. The end of the tape is placed in the reader, the load switch is flipped, and the problem goes into the machine. An average problem is loaded in perhaps 15 seconds. In the reader, the problem becomes the series of electrical signals with which the computer does its work. The signals are sent first into one of the six registers of the arithmetic unit. A register consists externally of a horizontal row of 40 neon lamps set in a narrow strip of black bakelite. Vertical white stripes divide the main registers into groups of four lamps, representing tetrads. Each lamp is connected with an electronic flip-flop circuit. Each register thus contains 40 flip-flops. A lighted lamp results from a hole in the tape and means a binary one. No light is a blank or a binary zero. Thus, a register may be regarded as an indicator of events occurring in the arithmetic unit. The problem is next transferred from the register to the memory. The maniac's principal memory is of the electrostatic type, utilizing 40 standard 2-inch cathode ray tubes mounted in individual metal cases above the arithmetic unit, 20 at the front and 20 at the rear. To make it operate as a storage device, each tube is modified by the addition of a fine metallic screen to the outside of its face. Necessary electronic circuitry is included with the tube in each case. At each end of the memory bank, front and rear, is a monitor tube. By means of selector switches, the monitors may be connected with the storage tubes to indicate what is happening on their screens. A tape can be designed to write almost anything in the memory. The register and memory are connected in a so-called parallel fashion. One flip-flop of the register communicates through an electronic gate with one and only one storage tube in the memory. For convenience, all material of a particular type used in the computer is stored in its own arbitrary block of addresses in the memory. The blocks are filled with words in a definite sequence, from top to bottom and from right to left. A spot in any tube is the residence of one of the 40 binary characters of a word. All characters of the same word reside at the same address in their respective tubes. The memory, when completely filled, contains a total of 1024 times 40, or 40,960 binary characters. The array is about an inch and a half square. These spots on the tube faces are being regenerated continuously. If they were not, they would fade away in a short time, and important information would be lost. An auxiliary storage device, a rotating magnetic drum with 200 heads, increases the memory capacity of the machine by a factor of 10. Words are handled in blocks of 50. The relatively slow operation of this system makes it useful only as a supplementary memory. A problem may reside in the memory indefinitely, but it can't be solved there. The instructions of which it is composed must be withdrawn in proper sequence, interpreted, and carried out. The solution of a problem starts when a button on the operating desk is pushed. Instructions are transferred from the memory to the top or control register of the arithmetic unit. Orders and addresses are separated in a set of function circuits, and orders are sent to a diode matrix for interpretation. While addresses go to the memory control circuits for consultation of the specified spots in the array, 
The matrix is a sorting device. Each of the 30 odd orders which might enter it is recognized and sent to an electronic programmer which arranges for the execution of the order. The active elements of the matrix are crystal diodes which are mounted in sets of six on octal plugs. The memory circuits act to question the address involved in the instruction to determine what information it contains. This information is sent to join the order information in the programmer. The required operation is then performed and thus an instruction is carried out. Three registers are involved in the addition and subtraction processes. Two numbers to be added are brought together in the adder, located at the rear of the machine, directly opposite the registers. The sum of the numbers appears in one of the registers. Subtractions are performed in a similar manner, except in this case, a system of complements is used. The multiplication and division processes involve three registers also and consist of a series of additions and register shifts. A rounded off product appears in one of the registers. A more precise product, correct to 24 decimal places, is available also. Half in one register and half in another. Answers to problems are stored in a block of addresses in the memory. The output instruction includes an order to bring them out and print them on a sheet of paper in coded decimal form. This is done in a fast printer, which writes 40 digits per line at a rate of 15 lines per second. The paper stops while a line is printed, then advances a quarter of an inch to the next position. To prevent excessive loss of time and information in case of power or component failure, blocks of material are brought out from the memory and put on magnetic tape to be referred to if necessary. This feature is especially useful in the case of unusually long problems requiring several hours of computation. In order to check the operation of the computer, a number of test problems have been devised. Some are designed especially to bring out faults in the memory tubes and others to reveal improper functioning of the arithmetic unit. If trouble exists, it shows up as an error in the printed answer and may be localized readily. This picture of the maniac has been necessarily brief and incomplete. Some phases of its operation have been barely touched upon and none has been described in any great detail. It is hoped, however, that its general principles of operation have been made clear and that some of its unique and interesting features have been exposed. <laughs>